In the following video series, we are going to learn about edu.net. Edu.net is a mechanism to communicate with the database. It allows us to work with the connected as well as disconnected architecture. Now let us talk about the connected architecture. In connected architecture, what happens is that, that while the operation is performed, the database connection is alive. This database connection is, is, is alive and your operation will be performed. And in disconnected architecture, what, hap what happens is that once the record is retrieved from the database, you can close the uh, database connection and then you can perform operation on, on, on the records that is returned from the database. Now, throughout this uh, uh, demo demonstration, I am going to use a demo uh, demo database, and in that demo database, we have a table called personal detail, and this is the structure of the personal detail table, where we have auto ID, auto increment, first name, last name, age, and active. Uh, first name is a varchar, last name is of varchar, and size is 50. Age is int, and active is uh, bit type so you can store either 0 or 1 that is true or false now in order to work with edu.net we will have to use certain namespaces the first is that uh, system.data naturally because that contains the data set or data uh, tables and then system.data.sql client because we are dealing with a SQL server so we will have to use SQL client in case we are dealing we will deal with the OLEDB database then we will have to use system.data.oledb client and then system.text naturally because I have to just concatenate many things then we are going to use system text but system.text is nothing to do with us uh, with the edu.net so the main uh, namespaces that is used in edu.net is system.data and system.data.sql client now uh, one one connection string that would be common in throughout all the videos uh, or throughout all the how to's that I will cover under edu.net is this where I will have a uh, connection string its name will be constr and its value will be my database uh, connection strings in your case the this connection string data uh, can, can may vary because your server name may be different your uh, database name may be different and your password name may be different so just change this uh, accordingly now in the first how to related with edu.net we are going to see that how to retrieve data from the database ok so let, let us uh, copy paste this code in my aspx.cs means in the code behind so let me delete my existing code and uh, I am going to copy paste my connection string settings as well so here is my connection string setting and uh, this code I am going to copy paste into under my page load event so here is my page load event and uh, uh, here it goes okay there is certain error so I'm just going to rectify this error and uh, then hopefully my code will work I hope there is no more error okay so I have to remove naturally this page load also yes so here is my code now naturally we will have to use two namespaces as, as I have described earlier so let us use those namespaces let me copy paste these namespaces from here so yes now you can see that all the errors are gone now yes yes now let me describe this code one one by one okay 
so here first what I have done is that using system dot configuration namespace we are using configuration manager dot connection strings and we are passing the name of the connection string means this name and we are getting the connection string value into my underscore con str variable and then I under page load event we are first instantiating this data table and then I have one variable called auto id do not worry about this too much and then we are using the using block the the using block makes sure that, that once our work is done using this SQL connection object then this SQL connection object gets closed and disposed okay so that's why I'm using block you can also use try catch block but it is always suggested that whatever object that inherits with I disposable interface should be used with the using block so that the close and dispose method is automatically uh, called if close method is not there then dispose method is called automatically so that's why I'm using uh, this using block here and this is the best practices as well and then under the using block under the using block uh, after instantiation of the SQL connection object by passing the connection string we are writing the SQL statement this is the SQL statement that will basically uh, uh, retrieve all the data uh, from the database whose auto ID is something that I will specify so here my auto ID is 1 so what I want is that I want to retrieve all the records from personal detail table whose auto ID is greater than 1 in this case I am using the simple SQL statement here itself in the real scenario you can create a stored procedure and you can execute that stored procedure I am going to cover that as well in, 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 in following videos and then once we have the SQL statement that then we are using the SQL command object by passing the SQL statement that we need to fire and the connection to be used so in this case I am using the same connection that I had instanti instantiated earlier and because this SQL statement is, is using one parameter so I am adding one parameter to this SQL command you can see that SQL parameter PRM equal to new SQL parameter and here is my uh, parameter name at the rate auto id you can see this this is at the rate auto id and uh, the value of the parameter will be the auto id that i have declared here and then we are adding that parameter into the command object see this command object dot parameters dot add and then the sql parameter now once we have the command object then what we can do is that we will instantiate the sql adapter and uh, in the constructor of SQL adapter we will have to pass the command object now this is the command object that we had used just now here you can see and we are passing that command object in into the constructor of the SQL adapter and then we can call the fill method of the SQL adapter you can see that I am calling the fill method and this fill method accepts two parameters it can either accept data set or data table okay there are many other overload as well we will we may talk about this later on but here because this SQL statement return only one result set so I am passing parameter as data table so my data table is table that I had instantiated at the top and once we have uh, executed the fill method what happens is that it, it basically execute this select statement against the database and retrieve all the records and fill into this data table and then what we are doing is that we are looping through all the data rows of the data table and then writing the their values on the page using response dot write very simple now let me run this page and see that how it is looking like so here is my page and looks like there is some bug here so yes now I'm refreshing keyword not supported user okay I think there is some problem in the web.config file so user ID now let me run the my page again and you can see that it will connect to the database it will fetch the records from the database and then it will populate on the page let's wait for a couple of minutes okay there is some error related with the network related instance okay let me 
okay so there was one bug here my server name was not proper so now you can see that I have corrected the server name and you can see that all my records from this uh, uh, database table is being listed here now let me show you the records of the database table here is my records from the database table and all those records is being listed on the page here so this was the very simple uh, uh, code that will basically execute the SQL, SQL statement against the, against the database and uh, uh, list all the records using the for each loop and uh, print on the page.